everybody. Uh, we'll carry on. Uh, the next topic for us to discuss is um, the, what the book calls biconditional statements, uh, but which is sometimes also called logical equivalence. And um, in the last section, we talked about implication. We had statements of the form if P then Q. And uh, now um, we want to talk about how to combine that with uh, the situation where you have if Q then P. Um, so let's, uh, let's start with some preliminaries. So before we uh, dive into biconditional specifically, uh, I want to get a very important piece of terminology on the record, uh, and that's this word converse. So um, the, uh, the converse of a, of a statement uh, is constructed out of an implication in the following way. So you start with an implication P implies Q. So this is the same thing as saying, if P, then Q. The converse is what happens if you reverse Q and P. So this is, if Q, then P. And these are different statements. And it's probably the most common logical fallacy that you'll hear even in everyday conversation is when people get these two things confused. It's very easy to do if you're not careful. So let's start by looking at the truth tables. So here you have P, Q, and P implies Q, and here you have Q implies P. Now, there are four possibilities as always. P and Q can both be true, true and false, false and true, and false and false. Uh, okay, so what about P implies Q? Well, if they're both true, it's true. If P is true and Q is false, that's the lying situation. That's where I told you if P, then Q, but then P is true and Q is false. So in that case, my implication is false. And if P is true is false, then we discussed how the implication is automatically true. What about if we go the other direction? Well, it's still the case that they're both true. It's true. But now Q comes first. So if Q is false, the statement is automatically true. So there are two places here where Q is false. Here and here, the statement is automatically true. And then there's this situation where Q is true and P is false. And in that case, the implication is false. And if you compare the two columns of this truth table, you'll notice that if P then Q, if P is true and Q is false, it's false. And if Q then P, if Q is true and P is false, it's false. And otherwise it's true. So they're, they're not exactly the same statement. Well, this is all very abstract. What about a very specific example? So here's an if then statement. If I own a BMW 335XI, which for those of you not up on things is a particular model of a car, then I own a car. So this is an implication. Uh, the statement P is I own a BMW 335XI and the statement Q is I own a car. And because a BMW 335XI is a kind of car, the implication if I own a car, then I own a BMW 335XI is true. Sorry, if I own a BMW 335XI, then I own a car. That's a true statement. The converse is what happens when you reverse those. And in English, the converse would say, if I own a car, then I own a BMW 335XI. And that's certainly false because I might own a car, um, just because I own a car doesn't mean it's this particular kind of car. It could be any kind of car. So going from if I own a car to concluding that it's a BMW 335XI, that's not a true statement in general. So this is a one of many examples of a case where we have an implication P implies Q in one direction, but Q implies P is false. So a biconditional or a assertion of equivalence is what happens when you combine both P implies Q and Q implies P. So the symbol for it is a double headed arrow and it that it suggests what you would think, namely that both P implies Q and Q implies P. 
And in a logical sense, you can think of that as this statement, if P implies Q, that P, if P then Q is, tr is true combined with and, if Q then P. So it's a compound uh, statement. Um, so this is often read if and only if, P if and only if Q, and that's because if you remember uh, from our discussion of the if then, if you say P if Q, that's uh, a shorthand way for saying Q implies P, and saying P only if Q is a shorthand way of saying if P then Q. So if you put those together and you say if and only if, then you get both P implies Q and Q implies P. Sometimes you'll also see necessary and sufficient used in this situation. P is necessary and sufficient for Q. And again, from our discussion of if then, you remember that you can use these words necessary and sufficient to give you the different directions of the implication. And so necessary and sufficient gives you both directions. So it, just to hammer this home, you can't reverse the arrow. P implies Q is not the same as Q implies P, but P if and only if Q is the same as Q if and only if P. So what is the truth table for this operation? Well, if you remember, we worked out the truth tables for P implies Q and Q implies P. So let me borrow them. And just to remind you, um, the difference happens in the case first where when P is true and Q is false, you get um, a false here, and it's when Q is true and P is false that you get a false here. So let's combine these two things with and. So remember that P if and only if Q means P implies Q and Q implies P. And remember that the logical and is only true if both the two statements are true. So P implies Q has to be true and Q implies P has to be true, then the and is true. And P implies Q is true and Q implies P is true, it means the and is true. And in the cases in the middle, the and is false. So if you look at this carefully, you'll see that the, the, the double-sided implication, the if and only if, is true when the two statements are the, have the same. So they uh, P if and only if Q is true, provided that P and Q are either both true or both false. And if they're different, then the if and only if is false, right? So if you, uh, if you look here, the two places where it's true are the places where P and Q are either both true or both false. I've called this here equivalence and that's yet a third way to say if and only if. You can say P if and only if Q, P if and only if Q, or P necessary and sufficient for Q. And finally, you can say P is equivalent. Q. And here the equivalent is in the sense of logic, logically equivalent, meaning both statements are true or both statements are false. So I just recap those, uh, those um, alternative ways of saying it. If and only if, necessary and sufficient is equivalent to. And then finally you can say if P then Q and conversely, because remember that the converse means switch them around. So this is a way of saying if P then Q, and also it's still true that if you switch them around and get if Q then P. So here's uh, one of the homework problems from this section. It says, put the statement 
if x, y equals zero, then x equals zero or y equals zero, and conversely, into the form p if and only if q. So you have to decode this statement to identify what's p and what's q. So here you have the if. So the thing that goes in the if is p. p is the statement x, y equals zero. The then is an or. The then is x equals 0 or y equals 0. So if you want to put this in the if and only if form, it becomes x, y equals 0 if and only if x equals 0 or y equals 0. You don't need the parentheses if you were just writing in English, but I put it here for clarity. Um, Interestingly, just to sort of talk about this a little bit more, what about if I started with the statement, if x, y equals 0, then x equals 0. So this is false, right? Because, uh, uh, oops, to indicate that it's false, you could have the situation that x equals 3 and y equals 0, and then x, y would be 0, but x is not 0. But if x equals 0, then x, y equals 0, that's true. Because certainly if you multiply y by 0, whatever y is, you're going to get 0. So here's a situation where um, you can't you, you have a, 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 the implication is true in one direction. It go, so this is, this is the, if, if x equals 0, then x, y equals 0. But the converse statement, if x, if x y equals 0, then x equals 0 is false. So you, that's why you need both x equals 0 or y equals 0.